What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. I think I might have the ultimate SkyTrack Plus outdoor test. The reason is because we're here and the sun is just blaring down from where we're hitting. So let me explain a little bit about the setup today. So I have a Bushnell Pro X2 here. From this hitting area, I've hit my tall flag. It's exactly 35 yards. So we're gonna use that as a marking point today. I wish I could show you through the laser finder. You'll have to trust me on that one, but it's exactly 35 yards. Generally, I'd land the ball just a little bit short of that. The green is not sanded, so I, it's tough to get balls to check up until that's sanded. Um, I have a decent amount of balls here that are in fair shape. A couple of them are chewed up. I'll probably point those out before I hit them because I'd like to see how the SkyTrack Plus reacts to those. But there's a lot of things to consider today. So I'm running their beta uh, iOS app. So we'll have to pay attention. There may be some things that they're finalizing inside of there, but I have my 58 degree wedge selected. I have the SkyTrack lined up using my eye. So I think it's pretty aligned. Um, and then the interesting part is, is the red dot. Now I can see the red dot right now from where I'm standing. Once you have an idea of where it is, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, the sun couldn't get brighter than it is right now. Um, could you lose it here and there after looking into the sun? I think it's possible. But the goal today is just to give you guys a really good outdoor demonstration. Now, I'm placing it in the vicinity of the dot. It may not be perfect. The most interesting part is this 58 degree wedge that I'm hitting. When you set it behind the ball, the sun is glaring off of this club. I mean, I can probably show you guys the reflection off of the side of the sky track or something. I mean, it is just glaring off of, you probably see it in my face. Um, so that's really gonna put a challenge on the unit. I think this is the ultimate test to see if it can handle it. So let's hit some shots. We'll talk about them and then uh, we'll see how the unit performs. But I mean, yeah, look at that. You can see the reflection off of my club on the sky track unit. So this is a, a, going to be a real challenge. All right, that one's well short. So 26 out of 35. So I didn't, uh, didn't clip that one that well. So we're just kind of getting warmed up. Let's see where our dot is. I can roll the ball right there. I can actually see it. So know that uh, you can actually see the red dot out on the mat. So that was one thing a couple people asked. Are you gonna be able to see it? Let's look at our club data. So I was from the inside 5.1. That is not what I want to do on my wedge. Usually I try to actually push my wedge outside, close the face and come across. So let's get set up for more of that shot and see what we can do here. Only did a couple test shots. I probably should have warmed up a little more than this, but I'm used to this shot. That was pretty good. Maybe a couple yards short of the pin, 32 yards, and it was just right of the pin. So I must have this aligned quite well. And then how do we do that time on club path? Still so says eight or a 3.8 uh, in to out. So I wanna purposely maybe exaggerate this and get this working out to in to make sure that you know this is reading that club data right. They said that the club data for wedge is actually uh, the most accurate. So uh, iron and driver, I wanna say they said we were within one degree and then uh, wedges are really, really solid. So let's kinda of come across this ball purposely out to in, leave my face a little open, and see what I can do to generate a lot of spin too. So you saw that thing, look at that, it, it checked up on the green too. So it was short of the pin, but look at the spin I generated on that coming across, and then sure enough, I was from the outside. Okay, so um, obviously manipulating that a little bit, probably exaggerating it, but you know that low launching, high spinning ball, if you're trying to hit that, I wish I could show you a zip up on the green, you know, but without the green being sanded so far this spring, um, you know, you're not always going to get, uh, you know, good checkup on, on the turf. But it's interesting to watch that it launched left and kind of curved a tiny bit right um, because where's the right? Yeah, 872 right, because I saw that ball actually have a tiny bit of right curve to it. I came across it so harsh. So that's interesting. All right, I can see the red dot again. My mat's not perfectly level, so when I set it down, it kind of rolls a little bit. So that 40% larger hitting area, I think definitely plays a large effect in this. So let's not go that extreme with the out to in. Let's try to do a little more of a, just a normal shot. I'm impressed that the reflection of the wedge is not affecting the unit thus far. That was a pretty good shot, normal for me. That was short of the pin again. All right, 32 yards. 
5500 spin, not too bad. I like the low launching uh, chips, you know, you try to generate some high spin. And then how did the path, see the path worked out to be much more square when I wasn't exaggerating it. All right, so where is that dot at? I'm looking up in the sun. I'll show you kind of what these balls look like. They're just Pro V's that I'm playing. Um, they can get a little chewed up. And the reason that I thought that I would play these is because range balls aren't perfect. So if you're out on the range, this is kind of what you would expect, right? So um, I feel like it's the right ball to do the SkyTrack Plus outdoor test with. Um, I love that I'm hitting these though within that range that I'm looking. I'm always looking a couple yards short of that pin. All right, we can try to maybe launch this one a little bit higher. See how it does with a, a higher launching ball. That was significantly higher. Look at that, that one checked up a lot with the launch. Uh-oh, the SkyTrack might not like the high launch with the crazy sun. So this may be the first thing we're identifying here is that uh, the high launching it might not like. You wait, if you can't see the dot, because sometimes it washes out, you can hold your hand up here, find the dot, follow it back, and then see it on the turf. So that's an easy little cheat method if it's this bright. I mean, this is extreme. Let's try to do another higher launching ball. That was probably well over 30 degrees that time. That reflection might just be too extreme with the wedge the way it is. You can see how much higher that was. That was a little behind the ball. Ooh, it almost went in. Oh, well, we got that one. And then let's look at the launch. Like I said, above 30. Not as much spin. I hit it just a little bit behind the ball. You're always gonna lose a little spin on turf as well. I'd have to say this is doing a pretty damn good job so far. If I roll the ball in front of the dot, it goes purple for a second and then it goes green. Then you know the dot's on and you're good to go. So I'll just set it back down. All right, let's do a normal shot. So it picks up the higher launch. Um, and you know, with that much reflection, depending on if the wedge is just perfect, maybe that would be one challenge. All right, I'm gonna go for that little higher spinner, come across it a little bit. That was just short of the pin, so that should be real close. There you go, 34 yards. It launched higher, 28 degrees, and I almost broke that 6,000 barrier. All right, so from where they're going, they're going you know, pretty much at the pin, most of those shots, and it's showing it straight forward. I feel like we're reasonably lined up. And then how was my path that time? So it was just outside point four, not, not too extreme. I could see the dot that time as well. All right, I'm gonna hit one of my lower launcher just say I'm gonna hit this thing up on a hill and want it to like kind of check and roll towards a pin. Uh, we'll try to maybe get it just on the turf, so maybe this one will be short. Oh yeah, way short. 23 yards. And then what was that launch? 22 degrees. So it's good to see it can pick up that like super low launching, you know, shot if you're trying to chip super low. And then, you know, my course has real turf. But there's a local course here that's nearby that has, uh, and I should say real grass, that has turf mats that I'm gonna be able to go to and do iron testing, driver and everything. But I thought this, what a perfect test. You know, short game, um, into the sun. You know, this is kind of realistic. If someone wanted to go out and they wanted to dial in their numbers and see if they could improve their spin or improve their launch angle, or whatever it may be, may be on wedges, including club path. Like I said, I talked to SkyTrack and they're the most confident with their club path and their face angle with wedge. And then, like I said, I believe it's iron and driver one degree is kind of their uh, margin of error is what they're saying of the calculation that they're doing. I did verify for a lot of people that the club path and the face angle are calculated numbers. All right, just gonna go for a normal chip again, maybe not super low. Try to go right of the pin this time and see if that goes right. I'm gonna purposely aim right of the pin. Oh, that was way right though. Look at that though. I can almost set a green and actually get this, you know, to land on a little green if I set a target out there. That might be pretty cool. Set almost to the size. 28 yards, that makes sense. It went off to the right too far and was short. All right, I'm gonna do one more to the right and not quite as extreme and catch it a little bit better. That wasn't that great of a shot. I got spin on that one. So a little farther right. 
There you go, that's right of the pin and maybe a yard or two short. Okay, 31, went right, so I must have this aligned well because it's reading those right. All right, I have one more ball left. I think, how chewed up is this one? This one's pretty chewed up. I like that it's reading the ones that are pretty chewed up. And when I say pretty chewed up, I'll show you guys this ball. I mean, that's pretty chewed up in my opinion. Hopefully you can see that on camera with the sun and everything. And then of course I walk back, I can see the dot. It's good to know. All right, let's just go at the pin again. And about two yards short or so. 32, launch angle was good. Not as much spin, caught it just a little bit behind the ball, which makes sense. Not the best short game player. I gotta dial in. I mean, I, now that I have a practice facility, it's time to dial that in. Now here is a good test. Have you guys ever seen a floater ball? Have you ever been to a range that has water and they have floater balls? Yeah, I, I keep these out here for people that aren't confident, you know, hitting up on the green. And this will be interesting to see how it reads this. It should be like super low spin and they launch higher too. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'll actually try to launch this lower like those other shots you saw and then we'll actually see if it launches higher. Oh yeah, definitely launched higher. I mean, I really like where the distance is for all of these, 30 degrees. So yeah, it was higher. Look at the spin, only 3177. So it's doing a good job of measuring the ball spin. You know, obviously that, you know, floater ball is gonna spin way less. And it actually did a good job on the carry because I would have had that about three or so yards, maybe a little more uh, short of the pin. Um, I really hope this is a, a, a good, you know, outdoor test. You know, a lot of people have been asking for outdoor tests and I think it's you're gonna need various testing. We're gonna have to do iron testing and driver testing and everything. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching as always. You know, stay tuned. We'll have a lot more coming soon.